So we have a contract or a group of contracts, but we're going to focus on a single contract. And we're going to take that contract and turn the text into data. Now, I don't mean we're going to wave a magic text wand and automatically get data. Yes, there are optical character recognition systems out there. Yes, artificial intelligence someday may make all of this irrelevant. The only thing that works reliably is you as an expert reviewing the contract, harvesting specific data based on a structured notion of what you need at the end of this process. So we're going to talk about how to structure the data that you will need so that when you look at a contract, you're getting the right things from that contract. Working with a single contract, how do we turn text into data that we can actually manage? The first thing to do is to get the basics from the contract. This sounds simple, but it's often not done and people don't know what the basics are. So the basics are things like the title of the contract. This can be a summary title or the words at the top of the document, but you need a little summary that allows you to know what contract you're talking about. The next thing you need to get are the parties to the contract. Who is bound by this? And by this, I mean not just the other party's name, but the legal name of your organization. If you are part of an organization that has multiple legal entities, most people work for such companies, it's important to be precise about the legal entity in your corporate family that uh, has, uh, is contracting in this particular contract as well as the other party. You need to capture the consideration. What is the exchange of value? What is the subject of the contract? Who the owned entity is uh, that you are uh, working on behalf of? And then the internal assignment of the contract. So what division, department, or location, depending on the type of contract in your organization, are you going to associate the contract with? The dates, the effective and end date or other dates as needed that we discussed earlier. And then the type of contract. We're going to talk about more about some of these in just a moment. So here's an example, mutual non-disclosure agreement. Very basic routine agreement, but it will illustrate some of what we're talking about. So the title of the contract is right at the top. We would simply grab mutual non-disclosure agreement from the top of the contract. And uh, we will also note the parties. So there's party A, because it says by and between, and we've blurred out who the actual name is, together with the affiliates and subsidiaries doing business as. So notice there are multiple names of these parties, but really we're trying to figure out who party A is, and then who party B is uh, that might be uh, related to this. So that owned entities idea, if you notice in party B, for example, uh, after the name of the party, it says together with its affiliates and subsidiaries. So this means that if party B is a, has a parent company and then some subsidiaries that it owns and controls, all of those entities will be the beneficiaries of this contract uh, as well. And then the consideration, as well as the intent to be bound, are both in those recitals area. Not all contracts have a formal recitals area, or they might not label it as recitals. But we're reading for the description of what's being exchanged and that the parties intend to be bound. And then you'll notice at the top, underlined in orange, it says uh, that this is effective the date it's fully executed, which means... Party A might sign on a Monday, party B might sign on a Tuesday, but that's when it's fully executed, is on Tuesday after both parties have signed it, and that becomes the effective date. So the date of their signature becomes the effective date of this agreement. And then you'll notice down at the bottom that there is a relative date. It's the protection of confidential information for a period of two years from the date of receipt, and that imposes the duration of the obligation in this particular case. Now, an owned entity uh, is your legal entity, and it includes any parent company, subsidiary, affiliate, or special purpose entity that's described in the agreement as we discussed uh, earlier.